I received a comment the other day from someone asking me if I was going to make my record available in 24-bit 44.1 WAV files. Now, traditional CD players, which no one uses anymore, only played 16-bit 44.1 WAV files. And these 24-bit files are really only used in DAWs. So I replied that I'm only having it available in 320 kilobit per second MP3s. And it's very unlikely that neither he nor anyone else could actually tell the difference between this 320-bit file and a 44.1 WAV file. And I said, if someone tells them they can, don't believe them. Once you get to that particular compression algorithm, you'll simply be guessing. Just for a little historical background, the MP3 format was actually created making music more portable by reducing the size of files through filtering out quiet frequencies that are adjacent to loud frequencies. You see, scientists notice that our ears mask those frequencies, meaning we can't hear them, so getting rid of them should go unnoticed, meaning the encoder doesn't have to encode them, thus reducing the file size. When MP3s first came out, they typically used a bit rate of 128 kilobits per second, which essentially would low pass the files, meaning cut out frequencies above 16K, which people that were audiophiles actually could tell the difference between them. A great way to illustrate this is that a four minute song at 44K would be about 39 megabytes, whereas a 128 kilobits per second MP3 would only be 3.9. So it'd actually be one-tenth the amount of information of the wave file. By the time you get to 320 kilobits per second, the sonic quality becomes virtually indistinguishable from a 16-bit 44.1K wave file. To demonstrate this, I'm going to have my assistant Michelle do a listening test using six different songs from six different genres. The test is from NPR.com. It's called How Well Can You Hear Audio Quality, which came out a couple years ago. I figured Michelle is a great person to do the test because A, she has a degree in music production from Berkeley. B, I tested her hearing prior to this and found she can hear a sine wave up to 18.1K. And C, she has perfect pitch. Here's Michelle performing the test, which featured songs by Neil Young, Coldplay, Katy Perry, Suzanne Vega, and classical pianist Murray Pariah. This test will see if Michelle can pick out the highest quality 44.1 wave file. Okay, Michelle, you're gonna take this test. You have to find the best sounding recording here. We have a 44.1 wave file. We have a 320 kilobit per second MP3, and we have 128 kilobit per second MP3. Let's see how you do. Okay, what's the best sounding one, Michelle? I would say this one. Click on it. Mm hmm, all right. Okay. Not right on that. Okay. <laughs> Let's move to the next one. <laughs> okay, Michelle. Yay! There you go. <laughs> What's the winner? There you go. I am sitting in the morning, the dino on corner. I am I am sitting in the morning, the dino on I am sitting in the morning, the dino on corner. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I get this right, but I'll see this one. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I love this song. Okay, I have to get it right. What? <laughs> okay, so how did you do? All right, four out of six. Even with Michelle's training, perfect pitch and her ability to hear very high frequencies, she was only able to identify the correct wave file in four of the six examples, which is only 66% of the time. If you think about it, she was actually focusing all of her listening effort on trying to tell the difference between these and was only able to do it four out of six times. What I really find fascinating is that you have monitor speakers like these Barefoot Audio Micro Main 26 pair 
that go up to 45K beyond the range of human hearing. And people can say, oh, you can hear air up there. Well, most people that are in their 40s and 50s and 60s, they can't hear above 16K. They, they can't even hear a lot of people that are that age that have been working in the music business can't hear above 14K. I can't hear a sine wave above 14K. It's literally silent. And I'm 55 years old. Well, pretty much all the biggest mixers in the music business, the people that record labels spend a fortune on and trust their ears implicitly are all from their mid 40s to their 60s. Let me give you an example. Chad Blake, who's 62 years old, he mixed the Black Keys, Los Lobos, Arctic Monkeys, and Sheryl Crow. Spike Stent, 52 years old, Ed Shearing, Coldplay, Bjork, The Script. Justin Niebang, who's in his mid 50s. Taylor Swift, Lady Antebellum, Blake Shelton, Rascal Flats. Chris Lord Algae, also in his mid to late 50s. Green Day, Carrie Underwood, Bruce Springsteen, Muse, and every big rock band from the last 25 years. Tony Maserati in his mid-50s, Demi Lovato, Mike Posner, Keith Urban, Shawn Mendes. Andrew Sheps, who's also in his mid-50s, Green Day, Bon Jovi, Hosier, Lana Del Rey. Serban Ganea, who's 44 years old, who's mixed Dua Lipa, Lord, Bruno Mars, and Ariana Grande. And Manny Mariquin who's around 46, who's mixed Pitbull, Charlie Puth, John Mayer, and DJ Khaled. What's interesting is that in looking up the ages of these guys, I know the age of some of them, but most of them actually don't have their age posted. And I'll tell you why. Because they don't want people to think that they're old guys and they can't hear anymore. Well, these guys make amazing sounding records into their 60s and even older. Well, what does that mean exactly? Well, this... Ability to be an audiophile is actually dependent on your ability to hear things that really don't depend on your ability to hear frequencies really high or things like that. You also might not be able to tell the difference between a, an MB3 and a WAV file. It doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that, that your ability to balance a mix has anything to do with that. There's a lot of experience that's involved with this that tells you how frequencies work together and they have different strategies they use that go beyond just your ability to hear. Many of these people, not all of them, their monitor of choice is the Yamaha NS10. The Yamaha NS10 has been around since the 80s or so and they are $600 speakers. I have a set in my control room here. I've had them for 15, 20 years or so and they have a pretty crappy sound and they don't have a great fre frequency range. They're incredibly boring sounding speakers. Now, if I went out and spent $10,000 on a pair of really fancy high-end audiophile monitors, I'm not gonna be hearing what the people that actually mixed their records are hearing. It's probably not gonna sound anything like what they intended on it sounding. If somebody like Michelle, who can hear up to 18K, her experience with music is gonna be completely different than these people that mix records that can probably not hear half the things that she can hear, but yet their experience allows them to hear way deeper into a mix and hear things that would never even occur to her because she doesn't have experience. So, so much of listening is actually based on what you train your ears to hear. It's not about, do I have all my hearing? Most of these people that are over 40 years old have the 4K notch. They have a dramatic reduction from noise exposure, from mixing records loudly for years and years and years. So it might be down 30 dB at 4K, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that their records are gonna sound harsh or that they are compensating by adding a ton of three or 4K to their mixes. Usually, that doesn't even affect them at all because they've learned workarounds with it. So really, the audio quality of things, whether it's a 128 kilobit MP3 or a 44K or a 96K, you know, 64-bit recording, a lot of that doesn't have as much to do with things. And people really can't tell the difference, even the guys that are mixing these things. But their ears and their experience give them the taste to know what sounds good. And ultimately, that's what's important. It's not about how old you are or anything. It all comes down to how you listen to music and, and whether it sounds pleasing or not. 
That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, you can go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Also, check out my record, Preludes and Etudes, Volume 1, that just came out. And remember to like the video and comment. Thanks again for watching. I'm Rick Beato.